Folks, welcome to your week. This is So Bad It's Good with Ryan Bailey. This is your pal Ryan, and this is your pop culture roundup. We are doing the week all over again. It is Monday. That means the week is whatever you want to make of it. It's good right now. We usually give up by Wednesday, but Monday, we are full of hope. We are vim, vigor, all of that good stuff. And today, I couldn't be more excited because we have a legend. I tried to get this person on years ago, and I didn't even know how to get the, I'm telling you, I am so excited for this guest because he has been doing it and doing it at a level that nobody else is doing it out there. He is the one, the only, Kempire. Kempire, welcome to the show. Hey, thank you so much for having me. I mean, how long have you been doing this now? I mean, technically, <laughs> technically, I, I, I did Kempire Radio years ago. And that's when I interviewed Oprah. And that's when I interviewed people like Brandy, Brian McKnight, and all these <laughs> years ago. But I, I think I really found my stride during the pandemic. So in the last three or four years is really where I, I get I quit my corporate job. And here here I am with you. <laughs> can you? Can, yeah. Yeah. By the way. Yeah. Yeah. That's not the best to be here with me. <laughs> Empire, but uh, but like, what is it like, though, to not ex you can never have these plans for your life. You know, yeah. you would never think you would be doing this full time. When did that become that reality where you're like, the, the, you know, wow, anything is possible at this point? Yeah, I think this year <coughs> will mark three years since I quit my job. Come October, it'll be three years since I quit my my corporate job. And I was in my corporate job for like 15 years. So I I think, especially as, as a tourist, I'm sort of like very practical. So <laughs> I, I, I really iron out, okay. Will I be able to pay my mortgage? Will I be able to pay my bill? Will I still be able to vacation? I think I can do it. I think I can do it. I don't know how I did it because normally I probably like, no, I need my my good health care. Yeah. All this good stuff. But no, so far, so good. <laughs> well, now you're doing live shows. Like, what do you expect out of a Kempire live show? Because you guys, I'm going to put all of in the show notes, every one of his links and all of that stuff, because, you know, you can go to his YouTube, you can go to his website, you can go like, what do we expect out of a Kempire live show? Well, I've been excited about doing the live shows because when I went to London, I did like a very impromptu meetup with folks that are subscribed in London. And I said, you know, I really wanted to do something official where you come to a show and I entertain you. So it's similar to what we do on YouTube or on TikTok. However, it's a little bit more, a little bit more explicit. <laughs> and we call it Campfire. <laughs> yeah, we call it Campfire <laughs> After Dark because we are able to forget about community guidelines and rules. We get into all kinds of conversation from the hot topics to re reality television. It's a very different experience. And the great thing about it, every show is so different because we're covering whatever is happening at the moment. So I, it's been really cool. I've been, I've been loving it. We, okay. So you are like a, uh, a prince of pop culture and I am a purveyor of pop culture. And I feel like this is something I grew up loving, Little Kid in Kansas. I was just drawn to this at all times. Where does your love come from? Like, why Why is this something that you're like, this? I'm just drawn to this at all times? I don't know. To be honest with you, I think... I think it's been my obsession in regards to understanding people and why people do what they do. And I think that's part of the reason why I got really into reality television when that was first created with the real world. So ever since then, I've so always- So that was your entrance point, real world? Oh yeah, real world was my definitely my entrance point into reality television. But even before then, I've just always been very interested in entertainment and in, in the music industry. I have a history of working in the music industry as well. So I've always been very- in tune to what's been going on in pop culture. So it, for me, this felt like a natural progression. Even when we did Kempire Radio, we were talking about similar topics. We yeah. actually talked a little bit about reality television because it was very new then. So I, I've, I've been, ever since I was a kid, I've, I've always been very much obsessed with pop culture and what's going on in pop culture and gossip. And has your love for it changed? Because sometimes I feel the more I talk about this, sometimes you you learn how the sausage is made. You mm -hmm. get to see the darker side of things. You know, the magic that you once saw the real world with as a kid, it sometimes dissipates as you get older. And, you know, you see a lot of the other things happening. You know, I, we're going to talk about Wendy Williams in a second. Mm -hmm. You know, and sometimes the magic, it, it gets lost for me in certain moments. Does that ever help happen for you? I think especially when it comes to reality television, that portion of what I cover yeah. 
has really changed. I think I've always had an idea of how entertainment and the music industry worked. So I'm not completely surprised. I think the ditty of it all kind of just confirmed oh. all the rumors we've been talking about and covering for years. But I think reality television, because it's supposed to be sort of this thing they put on television for entertainment, even though we know it's supposed to be reality, I think because I've gained so much knowledge about the behind the scenes and meeting some of these people, it sort of has, it, it definitely has changed my perspective. Sometimes it, it's made me tired of talking about certain yes! particular shows. And then there's certain <laughs> shows that just reinvigorate. Like, I don't know if you've been watching The Traitors. That has... I'm yep, like, yeah. Yes, Campfire! That made me fall... I just said that last week. I said, it's just such a... It was such a joy. It was such a joy to come there every week. And it made me re like reappreciate reality stars that I had written off. <laughs> Which ones? <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, listen. I have now, like... At, I mean, the Atlanta with the Phaedra stuff. But I got to tell you, over the last few years through Ultimate Girls Trip to begin with, and then moving into Traders and Married to Medicine, I'm in love with her again. I'm in, I'm just, I'm deeply in love with Phaedra again. I, I have to say, Ultimate Girls Trip and Married to Medicine, it didn't sell Phaedra for me. It was... <laughs> Because it because those shows are about your personal story and yeah. not willing to give that. So I'm I'm just sort of like okay, whatever. But on Traders, because we don't care about your personal story, it's about the game. I yes. enjoyed her in Traders. I need her just to come back there. Ultimate Girl, yeah. Married to Medicine. I don't care. I love that. You well, Phaedra to me has this, and I know this is such a weird example, like a Liberace quality. It's like such an elevated character. It's a I am, it's like a, it really is a showman. Like it's a, it's a, it is, we laugh about showmen on Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, you know, but like Phaedra to me, like it just, she makes me laugh. The words come out of her mouth, the speeches. She also, I'm, I'm, a, I'm scared of her a little bit. Like those things all make like one glorious person for reality TV. But you're, I love the Married to Medicine and Ultimate Girls Trip didn't do it for you. But nope. to me, it just reminded me what, and I mean, I do think, and I wonder if you, I know we're hopping all over the place. Do you think we'll ever have that <clears throat> reckoning or moment between her and Candy? Because we know Candy is not going to be on Atlanta this season. We really had a cast shakeup. Yeah. Um, and, you know, there were rumors that maybe Phaedra would be put back into Atlanta, but they're keeping her on Married to Medicine. Do you think we would ever see that? Do you think Phaedra will ever really I, let that be an honest moment? No, because Phaedra, the, the truth ain't in that bitch. As uh, Dr. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say it. That was Dr. Heavenly. I'm just quoting Dr. Heavenly. Yeah. <laughs> Phaedra, I wanna, that was Kempire. I just want to make sure if you're listening, that was Kempire. Yeah. Mm. Uh, well, here's the thing. I don't think we ever will see that between her and Candy. I think Candy is done with Phaedra. I think she's been done with Phaedra. Part of the reason why, if we do see Phaedra on this Real Housewives of Atlanta reboot, it will be because Candy's no longer there. If Candy was still yeah. there, I don't believe we would ever see Phaedra back on there. Um, but yeah, I don't think we're ever going to get that closure that we need in regards to what Phaedra did to Candy on the show. Yeah, that's the shame. That's the one thing that every time I deeply fall more in love with Phaedra, I have to remember that moment happened, you know, and then I have to remember, and it's just, it's so interesting. And that almost makes me want to know what really, like what makes Phaedra tick? Like, what is the reality of that situation? Because Candy, I mean, like such an OG, she's done so much. Now producer on Broadway, all of these amazing things that have happened in her career. And she, to me, even throughout all of this, still seems like a very real person to me. Yeah. Phaedra seems like a Marvel superhero. It's like a difference <laughs> or a Marvel villain at times, you know? <laughs> and I think she should lead into that. She should lead into that personality trait. But her trying to share a life of on Married to Medicine and them constantly going back to Real Housewives of Atlanta. We didn't need Apollo on this last part of that reunion. He yeah, what was that all about? Like, I mean... And then Andy hugging Apollo. Like, we don't need to be hugging Apollo. Like, <laughs> I listen, I get it. I mean, it's part of history, but come on. That was weird. Yeah, that was her last effort to se secure her position on the show, even though we hear she has like a three-year contract. However, yeah. she knew she had to bring something, and Apollo was that something. But even the Apollo appearance fell flat for me. Isn't it weird when we have to monetize our personal pain and failures in life? That's reality television, unfortunately. I know that that's the name of the game. And I, well, I mean, I was going to like, well, I, I'll ask you this in, in terms of covering pop culture for so long and loving it for so long. And I guess coming off the week in which we have, 
in which we finally got the, you know, what the truth of Kate Middleton right now. Yeah. And we have turned not only pop culture, TV, film, music, movies, pop culture. We've also turned true crime into pop culture. And also the Royals are pop culture. You know, like we have turned all of these things that maybe once were not considered that into pop culture. What in your mind is the state of pop culture? And do you sometimes find now that hate is such a huge thing in pop culture now that it once wasn't like that? Mm. Well, here's the thing. The royal family, even growing up as someone that has loved pop culture since I was a kid, okay? I, the royal family has always been a part of that. Has always, at least for my generation, they have you knew, always yeah. been a part of pop culture, the gossip. I feel like, if anything, they're the interest in them sort of waned for a period of time after uh, Princess Diana passed away. Um, this whole Kate Middleton situation, I'm literally just getting into the nitty gritty of all the speculation. It, it's unfortunate that she felt forced to come out and speak out, even though people still don't believe that this is her. <laughs> they say this is AI. I know. I know. Kimber, that was, it was so great. It was like, finally, like the video comes out yesterday. And I'm like, and I, by the way, I'm like, Oh, okay. That's it, obviously. And I was more like, I was more kind of weirded out by the firm and how they handled this whole, how they PR bungled this mess. But I was like, okay, that's a real woman going through a real thing, real family. God bless her. Oh my God. I hope she's strong and get through this. And then literally within 10 hours, I see these articles. Was that truly her voice? And I was like, no, let's stop this right now. And they also were saying, why wasn't Prince William by her side during this announcement? That, I yes. mean, that to me stood out to me. Yes. Well, I mean, so that's so it never really ends. It never yeah. ends. Our curiosity and the only difference from when I was growing up to now, though, is that, like you said, we always thought that way, or you always thought that way about the royal family. We just didn't have social media. We didn't have our voices the way we do now. And I'm always like a big freedom of speech guy, but sometimes in 2024, I'm like, do we all need it? Do we all deserve it? Should we all have it? Like, I mean, because you you go on Twitter or X or whatever it is, and it is just man, it'll turn it's turned my beard white. Like I'm just like it, it's, it'll it'll scare the shit out of me sometimes that I'm like this much negativity on top of this much stupidity. And I don't mean mm. I don't mean with this in particular, but you'll just read the stupidest comments where you're like, this is you're not even putting two and two together here. No, there was some some stupidity. At one point, they were saying that they believe that Kate Middleton had a BBL, and that's part of the yes! reason why. <laughs> Could you imagine? That? I'm like, um, okay. Like, Could I, you imagine if that was it? She pops up, and you're like, it's a way fuller figure, and you're like, it we knew it. Shock me in this day and age because that happened with Madonna. <laughs> Wait, what kept you actually? I did not you actually Madonna. make a great. <laughs> I did not expect it from Madonna. After all I, Madonna has done. Oh my god. I um, you just Madonna that one picture. Remember cold. that one picture that I remember seeing that one picture going, oh my god, that was wild. Look. Okay. So I mean, I didn't believe the BBL Kate <laughs> Kate Middleton rumors, but it wouldn't have shocked me if she came out and all of a sudden we see that she had a little bit more something back there. I the discourse around it is like, you know, because I now I a hundred percent percent beliefs like and still she didn't tell us exactly what she is going through nor do i feel like she needs to oh, but right. obviously this is somebody going through something like i i without a doubt i believe that but what is interesting is that people are so sensitive and ready to anger these days with anything that you argue with with i i i made a joke yesterday where it was just like well um, glad the royal family got ahead of this one, and you know because they hadn't. They they put grainy photos out there, weird videos. They did all of these things, and this you would imagine one of the most powerful families in the entire you know world that they would have the number one PR people on this and tell them what to do, and they still managed to bungle this poor woman's health scare or whatever she's going through. And what I, I, I made this joke, and people were literally still like thinking I was talking about her. I'm not talking about her. I'm talking about the institution. And also people act like Kate just stumbled upon in this family, and she does not know what this family is about. At this point, after going through Princess Diana, Meghan Markle, you know, like they know what is, they know the deal. They know this institution has been riddled with insanity, uh, deception, not to sound like somebody from the traitors, <laughs> Duchess of Deceptions, you know, like 
you know, they, they've been riddled with people that have like done horrible, horrible things in this family trying to pull the wool over their countries and the world's eyes. So it, it shouldn't be as surprising for people when other people question the royal family. Yeah. Do you feel that way? I, I do. And, and and you're right. I feel as if the firm, as you refer to them, I, I haven't heard that terminology since the Oprah interview with the. Uh, <laughs> with, with That's where I got it. That's where I got it. <laughs> But it made you look at the family a little differently. Like, okay, what exactly is happening over at the, there at the royal family? I believe they still feel as if this is the 1980s, early 90s, and that's how they're conducting their PR, unfortunately. But there are a lot of celebrities that are still conducting their PR very much like they are still stuck in the 80s and the 90s. And it's a whole new age. And a lot of fans... Here's the thing, too. I think they realize no matter what they say or do, people are going to continue to speculate. But the fact that we had this Photoshop photo, they then said, you know, this is not, you know, she was playing with editing. And then they had these little stints of seeing her, but people still did not believe that it was her. And she felt, and it's unfortunate, she felt forced to to, to reveal something that she probably doesn't even want to speak out yeah. loud. And I felt for her in that moment. But where was yeah. Prince William by her side? Like I, I would have expected him to at least sit by her side during this moment. Well, I mean, that is, I didn't even, I really didn't even think about that, but now that, now I'm mad about that, but like, <laughs> it is it's one of those things too, though. It's like, could you imagine this very real thing happening and the firm bungles PR so badly that people start talking about like, remember when your husband cheated with Lansbury lady? And like, now you have to relive every bad thing that you've done up to that point. And yeah. that's when, and I know like we shouldn't feel bad for celebrities and things of that nature and people of state, but I mean, you do sometimes feel bad and like, this is, this is what's actually going on. And we dredge their entire histories every time something ha happens. Why shouldn't we feel bad for them? They're human. Like we are. They go well, no, that I mean, that's the misconception is that we all believe, like we all believe any, the other big belief is if you're an actor, you're a billionaire, you know, oh. it's like, I started off as an actor. Like I couldn't even afford my rent. Like, you know, it's like, if you have one line on a TV show, you are not a millionaire or a billionaire. I mean, so I think people assume that they live in such a glorious different life than we do that yeah. they don't have any of the issues that we do. Yeah. I, and I think the great thing about reality television and a lot of the actors and the entertainers that are getting into the reality TV space, people are starting to see them a little bit more human, a little yeah. bit, a smidgen, um, a little bit more human. But uh, I think we do need to re remember that. And people need to be held more accountable with some of the things that they say on social media because people are making death threats and all kinds of things. And I'm just like, you know you could go to jail for something like this, right? I don't think people know that any... Well, listen, I yeah. I mean, in the political system we're in now, I think fe people feel like we can do anything at any time and get away with it. So yeah. it's a real... And, and it's... I mean, just, man, this year is is going to keep getting nuttier and nuttier. Like, this is just the tip of the iceberg, and I'm so scared for it. Um, Okay, so, Kate, we hope you get better. I hope people leave you alone to a certain degree and just let you rest and heal. And, uh, you know. Right now. What's that? Out. She's in chemotherapy. Leave exactly. Exactly. Um, You had mentioned uh, two people at the beginning of this that, uh, first off, I just want to know, what it's like to be around Oprah. Oprah is somebody that's meant so much to me throughout my life. Like my my first diet I ever did was based on Oprah's first <laughs> book she released with her uh her uh trainer, yeah. what was his name? But, yeah, trainer. That was the first time and I was even I was 17 years old and I yo-yo and wait and she was the first person to inspire me to try to get healthier was Oprah and uh she means How do you so feel much now to me with with what she came out with. <laughs> with the Ozempic? Listen, yeah. I li <laughs> I personally am like, whatever makes you happy with that stuff. Like, I, I feel also what, you know, she's at a, she's of a certain age. This seems her body and her mental image or her, you know, the way she views herself has always been so important, but she's put it into words where it almost seems like poetic. It's like Toni Morrison speaking. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, you know, like, you know, do Oprah, Oprah Zempic and I'll buy it. Like, I just... Listen, I want Oprah to be happy. She's given me enough that I'm good with whatever. But yeah, she spoke at the GLAAD Awards <clears throat> two weeks ago, yeah. and she looked fabulous. She even did a uh, one photo shoot where they lifted up her dress, and it looked like she had a flat stomach, and people lost their minds. But what what was it like sharing space or sharing a time or, or, or having a conversation with Oprah? What is that like? Well, 
on honestly, I didn't share space with her. We <laughs> she called into then when it was just Kempire Radio, she called into our platform because we were talking about it was at the early years of own, and she had did an interview with the Kardashians, and she was receiving a lot of criticism back there for doing an interview with them because people were like, What are they famous for? This is before you know they became billionaires. But uh so honestly. It felt like I had been preparing for that moment. I didn't expect that moment to happen then, honestly. But it, it felt natural because because she is such a stellar talker and an interviewer, it didn't feel like I had I had to do much of anything. That's the great thing about, and I'm sure from you interviewing folks, the best interviews are those that come to play. She always comes to play. So it was a yeah. very easy conversation. And that for me is always the goal. You never want it to be sort of like question, answer, question, answer. You want it to feel as if it's a conversation. Yeah. Well, that she's the master at doing that. <laughs> <laughs> so it felt very easy, very easy. Um, but like I said, I, I didn't know that that was going to happen. And that happened, oh my gosh, over a decade ago, uh, we had that conversation. Um. Did you feel like in some way anointed? Did you feel, even though she wasn't anointing you in some way, I feel like if anybody talks to Oprah, they're anointed in some way. It's like a Holy Spirit. <laughs> I don't know if I felt anointed, but I did feel as if in that moment, I was like, okay, is this the moment? Is this yeah. the moment? <laughs> Am I going to get a show on own? I even asked her for one, which yeah. called it. It's like, so you're going to give me a show? <laughs> nope, that didn't happen. But I kept on pressing forward. And literally in between that time, it was years that passed. Um, but I don't know if I felt anointed, but it did for me say, who do I want to interview next? After you interview Oprah, like there are people I have to have conversations with and, and celebrities that I've, I've interviewed, but it sort of, it pales in comparison. Yeah. There really isn't anyone that I can think in, off, off the top of my head where like, oh, I want to interview that celebrity. Everyday folks, when people call into my YouTube channel, those conversations are pretty interesting and, and poignant. Um, but when it comes to interviews of celebrities I want to interview next, after you've interviewed Oprah, it really is kind of hard. Like there are people that would be, you know, you know, there are legends and icons, but like she's a great conversationalist, like I said. So some of these other celebrities, you just never know what you're going to get. Yeah. Well, that's what I, if the, when people like, when you, you know, I talk to a real housewife or something like that, it's like a mixed bag, you know, mm -hmm. like it's, it's like I'm excited and the, you know, people listening are excited, but sometimes it's not anything, you know, a knock on them at all. It's just sometimes not the best conversation in the world and you're geared towards certain talking points. And so yeah. when I get to talk to somebody like you or I get to, you know, I used to like, I, grew up listening to call in radio. Like yeah. to me, that's the exciting part of like trying to that roller coaster of whatever that live caller is going to do. Um, but yeah, you're, you're dead on right. Um, I wanted to speak about Wendy Williams too, because I just read an article. I mean, I, I watched that entire four part docu series that came out on, um, uh, <clears throat> Lifetime. I forget Lifetime a couple of weeks ago. And I, I think like a lot of us were horrified. Uh, I was horrified. Um, not just by her state at times, but the fact that this was able to be put out at all. Where is Wendy Williams? I thought was a very painful watch, even though they still argued that it was trying to take, have her take back her narrative. Uh, but to me, I just didn't understand. Even if you got paid all the money in the world, which we now found out she got paid $400,000. I'm still not understanding. Uh, I know her son is uh, uh, was an executive producer. The manager was an executive producer. But then the person, uh, you know, her the person in control of her her person signed off on this. I don't understand. Did you where where what did you think of of this series and where where do you land on it now? Weeks later, it was definitely a painful uh, documentary to watch. Um, for the first two parts were okay. We we're like okay, not so bad, but the final th uh, two parts were really they really drove the home uh, drove home what was really going on with Wendy. According to the filmmakers that did an interview with the Hollywood Reporter, they're saying that they had no idea that Wendy had the dementia diagnosis at the time of this of, of this, and if they had known, they wouldn't have filmed her. You know, Will Selby, her jeweler turned manager, and her then publicist Sean Zanotti all said uh. that they they felt as if Lifetime and the filmmakers exploited Wendy. But if you watch the documentary, it looks as if Will Selby and Sean Zanotti are Sean the ones um, yes. exploiting Wendy. But I, I did 
I did feel as if this documentary and the world seeing this documentary was necessary because now we are looking at the Guardian with, you know, with, you know, a microscope. Like, what's going on here? Why is Wendy owing a federal tax lien of over half a million dollars and you haven't paid that yet or taken care of that? Why is she begging, begging you allegedly for um, money so she can buy food? Yeah, there was no food in her place in the docuseries. And the uh, Guardian was accused several years ago by someone else for pursuing a baseless guardianship as well. This man had $5.5 million at the time. Wendy, of course, has a lot more. According to um, Radar Online, they're saying that she at one point had you know, an eight-figure fortune with Wells Fargo. We don't know where that stands today. You know, I, I uh, the, the, and the, but you know, the, even the Sean Zanotti of it all, like they all seem like they were using her to some degree. I mean, Sean Zanotti taking her to Los Angeles and, and you and I both know to put her in a meeting with executives about her TV show. And thank God the cameras didn't show that. That is just not something you do to somebody in Wendy state, even if you didn't have a diagnosis, even yeah. if you didn't. And the other thing that I'm still curious about is that once these people did realize the diagnosis, even though they wouldn't have done it at the time, why don't you begin each one of those docuseries with a big fat Chiron saying, this is Wendy Williams' diagnosis. Over these next three hours, you are going to see things that will show you aspects of what her diagnosis entails. Just yeah. so because you and I both know nowadays, like if you put one thing out, we're going to look at that one thing. If you put out an, an, an edit somewhere down the line, only like a third of the people that saw that initial statement are going to see that. Like they're not going to put it together. I want it like she deserves that. She deserves any future airings that like open up with her diagnosis. Do you believe that to, uh, as well? I, I definitely agree. I mean, there were a lot of leeches that were around and I know her son, it was, you know, named an executive on this documentary, but I don't think he was initially attached to the, to the documentary in, in an interview that he did a few, a few months ago. Um, but I believe everybody benefited from this documentary. I know everyone wants to play innocent and everyone wants to throw blame. Oh, it was, you know, the guardian. It was the manager. I think everyone on some level were, were trying to profit off of this because they knew people would tune in. And you saw those ratings. The ratings for, for the documentary set all kinds of records for Lifetime. Oh. Well, I watched it day and date. Well, I watched it day and date. I was really excited to watch it. I mean, I immediately was sad while watching it, but I kept watching it. Like, that's that thing. I want to see that. Also, I just read a, an article. I'm not sure if this is true or not, that her son just got kicked out of another apartment for failure to pay rent. So it seems yeah. like there are money issues abound. But I think court guard, like, you know, guardianship in this country, you know, you saw it. And of course, there's conservatorships like Britney Spears or with Erica Jane's husband, Tom Girardi. Um, but it is interesting to somebody like Wendy Williams. And then they're doing this docuseries. I'm wondering if anything can change and if the family will eventually be able to be around Wendy like they want to be. Yeah, because that's that's the important detail that I think people keep forgetting is the fact that Will Selby, her manager, and Sean Zanotti have access to Wendy or at least did because word on the street that she's no longer working with them. But her family doesn't know where she is, can't call her directly. She, They have to wait for Wendy to call them. And we're not sure as, as to why that is. Yeah, that's incredibly frustrating to hear. Um, okay, well, now on to something completely different. Uh, Real Housewives of Orange County, Kempire. Do you, do you follow it? Do you watch it? Do you like it? I've recently gotten to Orange County. I've watched every single city, <laughs> including Dallas, from beginning to end. <laughs> Orange County was not one that I was watching. However, you know, community was like, "Can you recap and watch watch this?" Yeah, show? I about almost three seasons ago, watching and recap okay. and following. But like, I've I've always sort of seen and seen the news and things like that, so I know who's been on the show and some of the big stories that have come out from Orange County. And of course, right now I'm, I'm following because there's a lot of mess going on. On, on well, this is this is the lot of mess coming. We we this John Jansen, he used oh. to be with Shannon, and now he is with Alexis. Bellino, who is an OG uh, OC housewife, and now they're together. This John Jansen wants to be a housewife so bad. He is so screaming for attention. It is really awkward to watch. Well, this week, it continues because John Jansen sues his ex, Shannon Bedore, for $75,000, which she allegedly borrowed for a facelift. 
Now, this made People Magazine. This isn't just in the in the gossip brags. This is People Magazine reporting in exclusive. This man is suing, and Shannon Bedore, you guys, released a statement after this and wrote, I am shocked. I can just hear this in Shannon's voice. I am shocked and disappointed that John has filed a lawsuit. My attorney has been in constant communication with his counsel. I agreed to pay John what he wanted because I knew that attorney fees would surpass the amount sought, but more importantly, to eliminate the negative emotional components that come with a lawsuit. It is important that I continue to focus on the positive aspects of my life and move forward. John declined the offer because he refused to sign a mutual non-disparagement agreement. I was hoping that if I met his baseless demand, we could at least use this as an opportunity to bring complete closure to this chapter in my life. The statement mm -hmm. concludes. Mm. The, do you, do you I think mean, the reason why he didn't want to sign the NDA so that he could slam her during this season? Yes, a hundred percent. There is not even a, like there's no way because he's dating Alexis Bellino. Alexis Bellino is coming back on the show after not been in, been, being on for many seasons. This is like a storyline served up. Listen, Shannon has made a lot of mistakes in the last year and her life. Obviously, she I think Shannon Bedore is a tragic figure in some ways. She mm -hmm. ran into a literal house, got a DUI, all of these things horrible, leaving this John Jansen's house. She's trying to pick her life back up. Uh, Tamara now is not talking to her. Tamara is like over there in Alexis Bellino's corner. So I feel like this is just going to be like a pummeling of Shannon Bedore. And she's like a very fragile, emotional creature, which we've seen yeah. season in season out. But this John Jansen, like this could have handled off. like this, this to make this public like that. And also to put in there for facelift, I think is just the icing on the shitty cake. What do you yeah. think? I agree. I, I feel for Shannon because, you know, someone that hasn't watched OC chapter in verse, but in these last three seasons of watching her, I always refer to her as like, she seems like the sweet grandmother. And that's not even a, a reference <laughs> to age or anything. It's just something very sweet about her. Yeah. Um, of course, it, it was deplorable when we found out that she was driving under the of influence. Of course. Did not like that s side of Shannon. And hopefully we see that she's working towards sobriety this season. But we also know that John Jansen is trash. <laughs> yes! Boom! <laughs> By the way, that's the pull quote for this episode. <laughs> we all know John Jansen is trash. Kempire. <laughs> <laughs> I, we, we know it. And the fact that he's suing her for $75,000. First of all, if I, I wouldn't be shocked if he was sort of insinuating, oh, you should get a facelift, and that he was the reason behind it. Just saying. Yes! That Okay, that's a Damn perfect point. Exactly. Why do you think she wanted to get a facelift? Because John Jansen kept saying he wasn't sexually attracted to her, potentially. Didn't want to, to move forward in, in the relationship. Didn't want to stay over. All kind, he, like, he was so terrible to her, her, her self-esteem. I wouldn't be shocked that he was the motivation for her even wanting to get this. And I thought that she would have counteracted and said, you gave me this money as a gift. Yeah, <laughs> I think that's a, I mean, hey, listen, I mean, kind of, it's like you don't ask for the ring back sometimes. Like, you, I get to keep this face, and you, you gave this was a gift, this face. I don't know well, the, the other in California, but <laughs> <laughs> the laws of California, you get to keep your facelift. Oh. Um, uh, but the other thing, too, is that we also, I think Tamara said it last season on OC, is that this John Jansen likes the cameras. He yeah. enjoys being on the cameras. And those are the ones you always got to watch. Housewives are housewives. They're, you know, like they are meant to be there. But when these house husbands, I mean, Jersey now is like half house husbands, half housewives. Yep. And, you know, what? I mean, they're in a whole other hole. But like this, like John Jansen, I think, likes being, you know, one of my friends came up to him to get an autograph and you could tell he was thrilled. He was oh. thrilled. And that's, <laughs> it's just like, come on, man. Why did they want his autograph though? <laughs> I I think just uh, it was a very sad person. I don't know. Um, it was <laughs> it's, they needed. Um, no, I don't know. I just find this very sad. And we're obviously in the middle of filming Orange County right now. So this drops while they're filming. And I just feel like, damn, it's like I think that's the other thing people don't realize in terms of these reality shows is that the housewives themselves, they don't know. Like everybody's like, oh, it's staged, this and that. They don't know everything. They might know what they want to talk about, yeah. but then slings and arrows are thrown at them sometimes for other producers or other cast members that they don't know what's coming. And I just hope Shannon can like hang on for dear life because I feel like she signed up knowing that she had the hot potato this season. Yeah, uh, I mean, I, it will be interesting to see how Shannon handles this. I mean, she doesn't handle conflict very well. 
yes. but I'm hoping for the best. <laughs> like I'm keeping my fingers crossed because I I don't want her because I don't know uh, Alexis and and what she's brought over the years. She seems to be someone that a lot of people like and they're excited for her coming back. But I don't know her <laughs> as as Mariah would say. So. I'm going to ride with Shannon for now. <laughs> oh, I'm riding with Shannon. And I listen, I like Alexis Bellino, but even then, even when she was on the show, they called her Jesus Jugs because yeah. her ex-husband, Jim Bellino, made her get these gigantic boobs, kind of like Jax did to Britney in Vanderpump Rules. Mm. And so it was like that. And then it was like everything was like church related. I don't know. She was fine. She was fine. But I even went to a party a couple weeks ago for the Oscars and a lot of housewives were there and Alexis and John showed up together and I was like, just making the sign of the cross. I was like, just <laughs> cursing in tongues. It was because I was just like, they're out in public trying to, you know, and they were trying to get into conversations with like Meredith Marks and this and mm -hmm. that. And I just, it, it feels like political campaigning to me sometimes. Do you, you know, that John is using Alexis or they're, they've con conspired together for I think it's mutual conspiring that actually led to actual romance. Oh, I do. Well, I see. I do believe there is a world in which, yeah, I mean, they both. But isn't that sometimes just relationships in general? Like that's like the main thing that keeps relationships going is attention. You know, mm. like is like we both love attention. I think you can name many relationships on Bravo that are similar to that in a sense. Like who? I, I like examples. Well, I, w I was like, listen, a, a perfect example right now, Kyle and Mauricio. Uh -huh. Now, before I wouldn't have said this, but after this weekend, and I guess after this year, Kyle is OG, 13 seasons, just been there from, you know, the start to now. She loves the attention because if not, she would have like taken a season off for one of the most painful years of her life. Mm -hmm. But what is shocking me now is Mauricio is seeming to love it just as much, if not more as then Kyle, because now I'm on episode like six of the second season of buying Beverly Hills, which came out on Netflix this weekend. And this guy, it is, I, I joked last night that buying Beverly Hills is real housewives of Beverly Hills, Mauricio's version, kind of like Taylor Swift because, <laughs> and this Kyle Richards, Kyle Richards is in three scenes in the first episode alone. I am learning more about the family dynamics of the Umanskis from buying Beverly Hills than I ever have in Real Housewives of Beverly Ooh. Hills. Now, some of the show is kind of unwatchable in terms of the other characters, and it's your standard real estate show of like, can we sell it? Here it is. You have to like sell to make money, just like basic stuff that we all know that they act like is some kind of Bible on how to sell real estate. <laughs> but the little in-betweens and Mauricio talking about like, listen, it turns out uh, I don't think she loves me anymore, and that's very hurtful, but what can you do? You know, like, and that's you'll like hear those... <laughs> love bean come on love bean please love bean no it, it but it's, so it's really jaw-dropping because i i get angry because bravo is my home team so when i feel like why the f isn't this on bravo like that's that's what i kept thinking i was like why the like we got to see an awkward bed situation where kyle and mauricio are in the same bed and you can tell she's like inching away from him trying she's like he's like you're gonna read your book tonight like you don't uh you know and it was just like i've never seen them necessarily in their bed together and yeah. it was just those little moments but i think what i came away from realizing this year is that mauricio loves the spotlight just as much as kyle like, like dancing I, with the stars yes you know doing little tiktok dances i'm like <laughs> I, rick, <laughs> never. rick hilton hanging out never. with anita hanging out with anita and tiktokers and things like that come on he seems like he really and maybe that's his midlife crisis but mm. it seems like he is taking a page out of kyle's book and now is craving that sort of attention for himself as well. Mm. I mean, Howard Stern was was slamming them for that scene that we got on Real Housewives of Beverly Hills with the, the family. It was just like, you could tell if Howard Stern's pointing it out, then I was like, okay, this is crazy <laughs> that these- I know exactly what you're talking like, about. I'm like, come on, you guys are so thirsty for the attention and you're using your children. I'm like, okay, but I shouldn't be surprised. Well, you know, it's very, you know, Holly weird. <laughs> That's Kempire. That's it exactly. They open Barry and Beverly Hills with a scene that takes place in the future where it's Mauricio and all the girls. They actually released this as a clip at Netflix did, and he's like, "Listen, you know, we're separated. Your mom told me I can date your mom, and you know, one of the girls is crying. And now this is the second scene we've had to see these girls crying in front of one of their family members in the last year. And my parents, you know, fortunately or unfortunately, never divorced. Um, but I never had to cry in front of them." 
but I can't imagine them divorcing, but also having a camera there to capture my reaction of their divorce. There is something so we, even if they knew that information before the cameras went up, just to say, Hey, we want this to get, we want to get this on film. So everybody sees it. There's something so dark. And that's the other thing about watching it. That is like this, uh, you know, that you almost feel like, uh, you're not supposed to be watching this because it's their real family, these real girls. And we're seeing them in scenes for the first time that they're carrying themselves. And that was what I walked away with. So I kept watching, even though I don't think it's the best reality show known to man, you know, it doesn't reinvent any wheel, but that part of it. But I just wondered how the hell Bravo really did let this, let this information over there instead of wanting it for them. And it just made me wonder how much power Kyle really has over at Bravo that yeah. she was able to only get away with sharing what she did. Well, I know Mauricio in the entertainment tonight interview said that it was really had more to do with the timing of how everything played out. Cause you have to remember when we found out about them officially separating when that people magazine article came out, they had wrapped filming for Beverly Hills. However, they, I guess they were just starting to film uh, buying Beverly Hills, and that's why they are capturing all of the, the fallout. However, there have been rumors about Mauricio cheating on Kyle for years and Kyle allegedly being very much aware of, of his cheating. But she said on the reunion that there was one thing that be betrayed her trust, and we are all just sort of like, what was it, Kyle? What was it? Yeah. I mean, that, that, that's the other thing is that I don't like, I know, I don't know. I, and I feel for Kyle. I mean, I root for Kyle. Kyle's one of those magnetic people that I, I would hate to have Beverly Hills without Kyle, but mm -hmm. it is interesting when you start to watch these shows so much that you think it's like this delicate dance of the housewife and the producers and what they will share and what they won't share. And it's this kind of, and you kind of see it on Vanderpump rules this season as well of, you know, the delicate dance of trying to get Ariana to film a scene with Tom, you know, like she went in letting them know I'm not doing it. And they're like, Totally. We've got your back. And now you can kind of see them trying to find ways to put Ariana near Tom. Could we potentially get that? So yeah. I think that's the other interesting thing as you, you know, now we have a language for watching these shows. There's a history to these shows. You started watching the real world back in the day. I started the same way. And now we have decades upon decades. So now it's interesting that we have people that are like, oh, you know, these housewives are trying to manipulate the storyline. They're trying to produce for themselves. I'm like, back in the day, you know, we OC celebrated its 18th, you know, 18th year anniversary of when it first came on the air this week, 18 wow. years of that, you know, from when it started. So now we have, it's a different way of how we look at these things and how the housewives look at being in them. And that for an audience member can be really weird because now there's like a 360 way of viewing these things that includes your show. Like we need Kempire's opinion. We need to go on Twitter. <laughs> we need to look at the memes. We need to get on the Reddit threads. That didn't exist Podcast. 18 years ago. <laughs> yeah, we got to listen to it. But like that didn't that didn't exist 18 years ago. So now we can't even really just watch what the producers are trying to tell us in terms of story. It's everything else. Yeah. And I and I hear all the time people say, I don't even watch the show anymore. I I, I watch your recap of it. I'm like, yes. I'm like, <laughs> Because <laughs> I feel like you have to watch the episode. Then it, it falls on me to make sure I'm covering every part of the episode. I have to watch I know. the episode. <laughs> I, wait, what are you sick of watching? Like, what do you hate? What do you like? Because right now for me, even though it's like my biggest, like it's like Vanderpump Rules, but I am at a place where I am in misery when I watch it for the first time Same. each week. That, 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 was, that was the first show that jumped out, out, of, out in my mind was Vanderpump Rules. Because that, last season was fun to recap, but this season, especially on on what they're giving us, I'm just like I'm not interested. I'm I'm really just doing it because I know my community wants me to talk about it. But even then, I said no promises, guys, that I will continue. <laughs> <laughs> what what I tell you? I literally, it's like it's like time to make the donuts. I feel like I'm going into a coal mine, and it's just mm -hmm. like, and I know that's like the, the, the easiest thing in the world to do sometimes. But sometimes when you're watching this thing, it's just darkness right and left, and you're not. But that's the main thing I'm talking about. Then you have to take into account uh, Rachel, the artist formerly known as Raquel, Rachel Levis. She has a podcast now, so you have to take that into account. You got to take the Reddit threads into account. Jax has a pod podcast. Jax and Brittany, you got the Like all of these other pieces of information are filling in what we actually see on the show. So yep. that's, I think, the also the part of it where I'm like, like this weekend we got Rachel's response to 
like she said, who actually knew in their friend circle that they were hooking up. She said Tom's mom knew because they went to Christmas in St. Louis and she, they didn't have a full conversation, but she did, you know, Tom did bring a girl around his mom at Christmas time. So she had to have known, uh, you know, Ariana's friend, Logan and Logan disputes this and says like, listen, I did see this, but we were all like fucked up. Like I was invited to their cuddle puddle too. They were like Tom, and, uh, Tom and Rachel were cuddling in the social media room. And I've been to their house. I know what that looks like, but it's like, yeah, like I, he's like, I really, and I mean, like I did tell Ariana, like I didn't keep this from her, but it was like, that's the darkness of it is that this is still going on, but the show is only showing us what they want to show us. And yeah. part of that is they're really trying to give Tom a leash to have a redemption season. Yet he mm. keeps fucking it up for himself by doing yeah. interviews outside of the show. What yeah. are your thoughts on Tom Sandoval's redemption season? I I haven't really labeled it his his reception season. Oh, that I do that tongue in cheek. I do that like because it's like there it's like dear diary. I'm writing in my journal about what I've learned this week. You know. <laughs> well, here's the thing. I do think that he keeps screwing it up because everyone, producers, LVP, everyone's really trying to give even even some of the cast are trying to give him at least a moment to at least do some self-reflection. But for me, you know, I think people overuse the term narcissist too much, but no, he is a walking definition <laughs> of a narcissist. He doesn't hey, see where- Empire, he... Dr. Drew said he wasn't. Dr. Uh, Drew said he wasn't, really? though. Really? I'm, Dr. Doctor... Drew, we're going to have to go back and, and check your- <laughs> No, no. <laughs> well, no, no. Can you believe we lived in a world where there was there. celebrity rehab? We lived in a world where celebrity rehab was a reality show. Yeah. Like, can you Oof. believe- Anyways, sorry. Um, yeah, you're right. <laughs> narcissist is somebody that I think is Tom Sandoval. Yeah. And so it's interesting that he continues to fight against that. Mm. And I think there's just no way that it's like, it's just interesting at no time. Like every time he apologizes within the same scene, he gets angry at people for not apologizing to him. I mean, here's the thing. I, 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 partially get where he's coming from because we know that this cast of you know failed actors and models all wanted wanted to grasp on this moment and i can't blame them because they're not going to make anything once they're off of this show so if they can collect as much money as they can off this scandal bravo and, and nbc universal made millions and are still making millions off of this so i can't blame them but he has a point they were dogging him in podcasts interviews on social media i get where he's coming from when it comes to how he feels towards the cast and how they were dogging him and they took it but he shouldn't be surprised this yeah. is who they've been since season one including himself yeah, look, look at the arena in which you are in. And also, because of Tom Sandoval, we got our series premiere of The Valley. The, the you know, you have unleashed the demon that is Jax Taylor, Sandoval. That is because of you and you alone. Did you watch The Valley? Did your did your viewers make you watch The Valley? Yes, they did. Well, no, Bravo made me watch The Valley because they it just went right into The Valley after watching it. <laughs> yeah. If you watched it live, that's what exactly happened. I know the connector scene was like Jax going, love to see and party with you guys but i got a family and a kid i'll see you guys later and then he drives to the valley in an uber what i what i liked about it was it did feel like an elevation or an evolution of vanderpump rules where we're seeing these couples and people from vanderpump rules sort of have evolved their parents now so it did feel a little different i still want to give it a chance because it was only the first episode but yeah. I, thought it was sort of, and I, it was sort of and it might have been because I was watching Vanderpump Rules, which has been so lackluster this season, going into the Valley. It's all sort of like, oh, here we go. It's the second hour. <laughs> can, I make, can I make it? But I, I want to try and watch it separately because a lot of people have said that they've watched and they thought it was pretty good. What I did get from it was it did feel like an evolution. But I don't know. I, a lot of people are saying that Vanderpump Rules needs to, to go away after this season. A lot of people say that, but you and me both know that will never happen nope. because they're <laughs> still raking in the advertising dollars. Like even and the ratings have like remained solid, not like insane like last season, but solid. So I hate to break it to everybody. These shows are made so they can sell soap. They are still selling a lot of soap, you know, and the Valley got really decent. They kept a majority of the Vanderpump Rules audience. It got bigger ratings in the Top Chef season premiere this week. Ooh. It got bigger bigger ratings than married to medicine did this week. It got bigger ratings than Potomac got this yeah. week. And, you know, so those are those things that it's not even if we think it should last or not, it is going to last period. Yeah. Um, the Valley though, I like that you said an evolution and in some ways, yes, but in some ways you still see there's a de-evolution happening because even with all the houses and the babies, there is still that internal misery and darkness, which we see with Jax Taylor, which I I'm, 
I'm there to watch. Um, as we start winding down here, uh, I was meaning, meaning to bring this up when we talked about Shannon Bedore, but we got horrible news this week in regards to um, the grand dom, Karen Huger out of Potomac. Uh, she was, uh, there was a, a wreck with her car and, she, you know, she, she got a DUI, you know, and, and what was your take on this? Because I dearly, dearly love Karen Huger. Um, yeah. and I was very, very sad about this. And, and she yeah. did say that she came from a dinner and that she was, uh, I think talking about traumatic events, but what is your take on all of this? Oh, Karen, we can love Karen. And at the same time, tell Karen, don't drink and drive. It was yeah. irresponsible. You need to take accountability. Stop with the, you know, my, my mom and my father, I think she should have waited, maybe spoke, spoke to her publicist before releasing that statement to TMZ. Uh, the photos from the car crash, she's lucky she didn't hurt herself, but more lucky that she didn't hurt someone else. We've been talking a very different story right now. At her big age, Karen, you're too cute to go to prison. Please don't, don't especially in this day and age. Back in the day, we didn't have Uber. <laughs> you know what I mean? We didn't yeah, I know, it's so easy now, yeah. You have so many options. And according to TMZ, they said uh, the, the police were stating that her car reeked of alcohol. When there were two bottles in her car. Yeah. So it's disappointing because there's, there's so many times that we can say, don't drink and drive, don't drink and drive. But I think the next person that that's drinking and driving will end up hurting some, themselves or someone else. People just need to stop. Take the Uber, take the Lyft, whatever it may be. Karen, we love you, but no, this was disgusting. And your statement, not taking ownership, was even more disgusting. Yeah, uh, I, I agree with you completely, but uh, I hope she is okay. And thank God yeah. she didn't hurt anybody else. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, tonight is Real Housewives of Potomac. Did we finally get to the finale of Real Housewives of Potomac? It seems like it's been three <laughs> years at this point. Um, this season, uh, a lot of people say that it uh, it didn't work. It didn't work. It didn't come together in the way, even though the reunion, which they make every lo reunion look good. You know, the reunion looks, they're all in black. I don't know if that's for a funeral of the show or something, <laughs> but, uh, you know, if, if, if your take on this season and the question I keep getting asked, and I would love for your uh, thoughts of what would be your cast changes? I know that's the most basic question ever, but what would you go going into the next season? Who would you get rid of? The and problem with this season was it started from last season's reunion. They had a conversation on colorism at the, the last season reunion, and I felt like they were not equipped to ha handle that conversation properly with the current cast. And I think because they did not have a proper moderated conversation on that and some of the other issues throughout the season, it has now turned into this issue between NECA and Dr. Wendy Acefo. And it, I hope at this reunion that we do find some resolution. That's what they've been saying. I've heard, according, I, I went at, I went to the uh, Summer House Martha's Vineyard premiere party and Candace was talking to some folks about the reunion. And apparently Giselle did, did not show any ownership. Are we surprised? <laughs> no, we're not. But in regards to cast changes, I definitely think the Green Eye Bandits, there needs to be one, one or one, not both of them, but one or the other needs to go. Yeah, kind of like Rinna and uh, Erica Jane. It gives them a chance to grow a little bit without your partner. Exactly. But I don't see Giselle being the one that they choose, to be honest. I don't. Even, uh, even with Giselle losing her position next to Andy, I think they did that to be performative. They wanted the audience to, to have a reaction to that. I don't believe Giselle is going anywhere. Robin, that's why she started this other business. Don't be surprised if you hear that Robin's not returning next season. Oh, poor Robin. And, and based off of uh, Anna Marie and Beverly Hills getting the boot, I think NECA won't be coming back either. Yeah, I don't think so at all. Which, by the way, thank you for bringing that up. Anna Marie Wiley, I hate that I forgot that she, <laughs> Anna Marie Wiley made a very big statement that she is not coming back. And and she in it was a very long statement, but also saying like, listen, my mom had passed away. I came in weeks late to the show that was already filming. Uh, I wish I had gotten to share more of my story. And, you know, it was a very long statement. I'm usually all for Housewives getting a blanket to two season start. Uh, you know, this one, I was like, I mean, I, I think you might disagree with me, but I was okay with this one just because I had read certain things about her that I was not happy with. And I know, I, I know I'm not the, 
the arbiter of anything and, and free speech and all of that. But I don't know. This year is going to be especially painful, I think, and due to election things. Also, her husband, I just think she almost did herself a favor not having to be have that be brought up in a storyline. Some of mm. uh, her husband's misgivings in the past. What, what did you think about Anna Marie not being asked well, back? Well, we have to make it clear. She didn't decide not to return. <laughs> she was not asked back. <laughs> yes, yes, that's it. That's it. <laughs> Anna Marie was not asked back. That's did, it, yes. I did hear from sources that there was a lot that she did film that they didn't include. I think by the end of the season, we're sort of like, why was she a diamond holder? I think it's because they did end up filming her a lot. Apparently, there were other parties. They did film her talking about losing her mom and, and that whole situation. But there was a lot that was left out that we heard that they discussed during the season in regards to her tweets, her husband's tweets, and things like that. But you're right. If she did come back for a second season, you know they're going to talk about that lawsuit against her husband and the essay of, of it all. So yeah, it might have been better for, for her not to return. But I'm also a little surprised because the ratings were still very much doing Solid. well without yeah. Lisa Rinna. And I know Lisa says she's never returning. Good. <laughs> Dude, that's what I, I, I tweeted. I was like, God is good. God <laughs> answers prayers. Like, I would never come back. Nobody asked you back. Yeah. And the ratings did, still did very well without her. I think them deciding not to bring Anna Marie back was because they probably have their eyes on someone else that they want to bring back. I think their rumors are that, um oh, what's her name from past seasons? Uh, there's a rumor that um, one of the past... Uh, Housewives might be returning for next season. Oh yeah, uh, uh, yeah, not Camille, but uh, oh, oh, uh, the the soap opera. Uh, yes, <laughs> you beast. Uh, you, uh, it's on the tip of my. You beast! I, I can't believe I'm. It's too nervous. It's oh, like God, I, my you, you uh, uh, damn it, uh, Housewives. I'm just oh, Di uh, Eileen Davidson. Yes, yeah, Eileen Davidson. Eileen Davidson. Davidson. There's a rumor that she might be coming back in next season. So maybe that's part of the reason because if Eileen comes back, I'm sure she's expecting a certain uh, amount of money too. So yeah, yeah. that might be part of the reason. And look, I've said cricket. I mean, Crystal has <laughs> a lot. She hasn't brought a lot over the last three seasons, but she cricket. is what they like in regards to money <laughs> and being a housewife and diversity and things like and she, that. Well, she's also a reliable narrator. I usually believe if if something comes out of Crystal, it's like really? even keeled. <laughs> to me, to me, I don't well, listen. I don't feel like she is making out like like when Rinna used to make like blatant like lies and misrepresentations. But yeah. even Anna Marie with like chasing that esophagus bone, like it just yes. like let the let it like you know let the mouse go. You know, even yeah. Sutton tells some tall tales. You know, to me, you know, Crystal is like on the lower scale of any of that. And Kyle's whole game is just to try to like hide as much as she can. Yeah. I lift. Screw that. Bring on Morgan Wade as a full-on housewife. No, I want Morgan no. I'm Morgan Wade. She stalked me, Kempire. Do you <laughs> like me, Morgan? Like, I want to see how that all works. I don't even care if they're dating. I just want to have her around you, to well, make Andy everybody the reunion. Maybe next year we'll see her at the reunion. I said, please, God, no. <laughs> please, God, no. I don't want to see that. I don't want to oh see. Oh my god! At all. Well, listen, I I know I've taken up so much of your time, and I could talk to you for hours and hours because you are like Oprah. You make everything easy. You make it like this. You make good conversations. Thank but you. like, where do you see the future headed for reality TV? And like we talked about at the beginning, the future of pop culture. Where do we go from here? Because we couldn't have predicted your platform and your voice. You, we couldn't have predicted. Reddit, we couldn't have predicted podcasts. We couldn't like all of these things. Do you have any kind of in your mind where you think all of this is headed? Do you think it's gone too far, or do you think we have a lot, uh, a lot farther to go? I definitely think that reality TV does need some sort of reckoning, and not the one that Bethany's talking about. I mean, I I hope for residuals for reality TV stars. But there definitely needs to be something that's happening. I think reality television is no longer reality. I think this is part of the reason why people are leaning more into the reality competition space because you, you can actually have fun watching reality yeah. television. And that's probably partially why Drag Race still does so well is this sort of competition aspect. Big Brother still does very well. The Traders is doing extremely well for Peacock. So I think them leaning into that aspect of a competition, even with, you know, Love is Blind, it's still sort of like this competition show that gives the audience something that they can root for, that they're excited about. It feels different. It also feels somewhat real for, for them. 
in regards to pop culture, we're going to see a lot more of, I think, big name celebrities being exposed. Diddy, I feel it was just sort of like the tipping point, but I definitely think that more is going to be coming, especially in 2024. Don't call I was me watching that, uh, but I just feel that way. Well, no, I was watching YouTube compilations of Wendy Williams talking about Diddy in the past before Diddy actually came on her show back in the day, and just all of the stuff that was out there, or rumored to be out there. And I was one of those kind of innocents that I had turned a blind eye a little bit to Diddy, even though, and also, you know, I've, I mean, we had that quiet on the set documentary in regards Ooh. to Dan Schneider and Nickelodeon this week, you know, and you, you know, you, re you, you read so many insane things, but then with the Diddy stuff, you're like, oh. This is real. Like he, he, he really did this shit. More shit is coming out and more stuff. And that just, it, it, it turns your beard white. You're like, wow, that is no, it's just really, really sad and insane. So, I mean, do you have any predictions on who that next, uh, what that next shoe might drop on? Oh my gosh. Um, I definitely think within the hip hop arena, we're going to see a little bit more of that. You're starting to see a little bit more in regards to the, uh, Russell Simmons of it all, you know, even though he's in Bali for years yeah. now. Yeah. I mean, there have been there have been so many stories. We just have never really been able to confirm them. And the fact that Cassie came out with her 35 page lawsuit that detailed, I think she only gave us a, a smidgen of what she I really mean, Kid Cudi's car blowing up. Oh, oh. And can you imagine what else Diddy has done? Can you imagine what else Diddy has done? And I don't think it's over for Diddy. I mean, literally, it's not. He's still facing multiple lawsuits uh, from other people. Um, so I, I don't. I don't necessarily have uh, a name, but I definitely think it's going to be in the world of hip hop again. Um, but look, Hollywood, like Quiet on the Set, another very disturbing uh, documentary about something that has been happening in, in front of our faces, in front of children's faces for years. And now that we look back on it, we're like, what in the hell were we allowing our children to watch? What were we watching um, on, on that show? And this man is literally walking free walking free yeah. and may have been sort of like the perpetrator and sort of groomed a lot of these other abusers so god I, I, well, I, I'm happy to leave on a happy note, folks. Uh, we're we don't, no. Also, wait, but how do you uh, you doing this yourself? You're a public. How do you deal with hate nowadays? Because oh, the majority of people, you have so many like like hardcore fans that love and love. But how do you deal with like? And and I ask like I always ask that of people because as this gets like a little bigger and stuff like that, you deal with some of that, and it gets really like it's a bummer at first. You're just like, oh no. How, how did you learn to deal with it? Oh, I, still learning. <laughs> still learning. Yeah. Here's the thing. Uh, the, the fortunate thing for me is that I'm so busy working on the next story. I can't get caught up in what the comment section is saying. Nicki Minaj, who I would hope she would take her <laughs> own advice, but she said recently in an inter interview, she's like, I don't talk to the internet. So I'm just like, you know what? I don't talk to the internet. I'm she gonna says she doesn't talk to the internet? That's all she does is talk to the know. internet. What are you talking about? <laughs> the whole Megan Thee Stallion. Okay, uh, I was like, feud. what are you talking about? Take your own advice, take your own advice. But oh. I'm, gonna, I'm going to take that advice. Here's the thing. There are a lot, the good majority, if you really were to do the analytics of the amount of positivity that is thrown at you, I'm sure it's probably like 98% positive and maybe 2% of haters. It's unfortunate that we give the 2% more love and energy than and focus than we do to the people that are showing love. And I, I try to, at least when I first post a video, at least get to, to the love first before I pay attention to <laughs> what negativity is saying. So I, I really it. don't spend my time in the comment section. Every once in a while, I'll see stuff, especially on Twitter. I remember they try to they try to um, cancel me over Andy Cohen's story. I, I remember did. that. Oh, I remember my goodness. That, yeah. I was, I remember, but think about you. I think you were on vacation at the time or something like that. And I was like, oh my God, is this ruining his vacation? No, because it was perfect timing. I turned off, I turned off all the notifications. <laughs> I think most, most of my notifications are off. But I, I, people are going to believe what they want to believe because even with that story, they believed I was in a club on a on yes. a Saturday night taking fil film. I don't film myself. You think I'm under a table filming Andy Cohen twiddling some boy's nipples? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I am reporting on it. <laughs> part of my job very much like but people will believe what they want to believe some people will still believe that i was at the club under a table <laughs> filming andy cohen andy cohen probably believes that he blocked me too <laughs> oh my god <laughs> that's great
<laughs> blocked by Jax and blocked by Andy Cohen. Can't buy- um, listen, you are insanely, insanely fabulous. I love you so much. Thank you for doing this at last minute. I really appreciate this. Um, uh, you guys, I'm going to put all of his links. I want to go see this man live now. I need to see Kempire after dark. Uh, I'm Los Angeles. Oh, South even LA. <laughs> okay. But I'm, I will definitely be there when you come because I, I just look up to you so much, man. Congratulations on what you have created. I can't wait to see where you go next, but thank you for taking all of this time with us today. We truly appreciate you helping us start our week. Thank you.